the five and the six, I'm playing with it. You ready? Yeah. Yo, what's up? This is Penny Hardaway, it's and you're now Hardaway. tuned in to Hoop Chronicles Podcast. Oh, Today on Hoop Chronicles, I got my guy, Jeremy Hunt, Memphis Tiger, Memphis' very own. He'll be sitting down talking with us today about his journey, on how he became a Tiger, and the adversity and the things he had to overcome being a basketball player. So today, Jay Hunt, we like to start our podcast off with, who put the ball in your hand? <laughs> uh, man, I actually did it myself. Um, just really kind of like at a young age, just wanting to do something just to like get into some type of sport. And, you know, I, you know, I remember just being in the backyard. I had like this big garbage can that was like an iron garbage can with the whole bottom cut out. And I just hung it up on the fence and I just used to shoot a ball in it. You know what I'm saying? And that was just like kind of like the beginning, beginning. I really didn't start playing basketball until like the fourth grade. Um, just told my mom I wanted to play and she put me on a team. Um, and I was just so happy to be like the tallest player at that age on the team. Um, so that's how that's how the, that's how it all started. Anybody in your family play play sports? Well my dad my dad played my dad played, you know, in high school, a little bit of college, nothing no major colleges, nothing. Um my uncle played um, for Lemoyne and Southwest. He also played baseball for the Toronto Blue Jays as well. Um, I had a couple uncles too on my dad's side that was kind of tall, um, you know, so pretty much, you know, my cousin, Wayne Moody, Marcus Moody, they played. So, you know, it's kind of like, you know, we got, we got sports in our, you know, genes, you know what I'm saying, in our family, so. So uh, as you learn to play the game early on, just picking it up on your own, what skill set or what skill do you think you had early on versus everybody else? Man, probably just the ability to be able to shoot the ball. Um, I always, IQ-wise too as well, I always understood how to play basketball because, you know, even when I was young, like fifth grade, you know, fourth grade, sixth grade, I always played with like grownups. And, you know, that taught me without even knowing, I was getting taught so many different things at a young age that I didn't even realize that I was getting taught until I got older, which one of the main things is accountability. You know, you get on the floor with older players, you're gonna be held accountable not to be like the young player that they leave open, the young player that they just knock over and take the ball and, you know, you got to be able to actually hold your own playing against grown-ups and older people or else you're not going to get picked up. So, you know, I always was a younger kid playing with older players and I always got picked up because I can actually play. And so, you know, I think that kind of helped me, you know, at a young age being able to play with them. It made it so much easier playing with my age group. That's why, I, you know, I rarely played with them unless I was actually playing on a team. Um, it made it a lot easier for me in that aspect. So, you know, me having an older brother and older cousins, like playing in the backyard, just playing with them, like that also helped. So, you know, that was that was a part of the process as well. Uh, you think growing up early on, uh, maybe the church league or the community league, uh, community center league, did it give you the confidence to be the man early on or did it teach you structure and fundamentals? Well, you know, I actually never really played in the church league and community center league. I know I, I did play in the church league at one point. We had a church at Golden Gate, um, at a team at Golden Gate, and my brother was playing on it. Um, and so I always used to like play up with them. You know what I'm saying? And I like, you know, my brother was like three, four years older than me. So it's like, can you imagine me being like in the fifth grade playing against eighth graders? Right. You know what I'm saying? So it was like that type of situation. But um, as far as community center goes, I stayed, right there at 976 Valentine Street, North Memphis, right there behind Dave Wells. And so <laughs> I remember this one game, at the time I was playing for the Memphis Rebels, and me and Marvette Neal, you know, who played at Northside with the UAB, we were playing on the same time, same, same team with the Rebels. So um, <laughs> the coach from Dave Wells came up to me one day, I was at the gym, you know, just playing, 
he was like, man, we play, we playing against Hollywood this week. We ain't never play, we ain't never beat Hollywood and all this. And, you know, we need you, we need you for this one game. Just, just help us beat Hollywood, man. It was crazy. I played in that game and I think we probably had like 25 points. I had like 21 of the points mm. and um, we beat Hollywood and, um, we had a pizza party like the next day. You would think they won a championship, mm. but you know, I, I still remember that like it was yesterday. And that was the only time I really played community center basketball. So you uh you played at community center that one time. Uh are you playing AAU? At the time, no. When did I, you start playing AAU? I didn't start playing AAU until my tenth grade year. Oh, okay. Hope. So you know, at the time I was just playing like with the Memphis Rebels. Oh, okay. Um, I think I had another team I ended up playing for Golden Eagles. You, I guess you probably could call that AAU at the moment. I, I mean, I don't necessarily know if it was AAU, right? Because we, I mean, we ain't go out of town or nothing like that. We always played like, Love you know, that. the Saturday morning leagues, yeah. stuff like that, like at all the community centers. And it's early on, and it's it's it's, er, it's early. AAU still getting developed. Yeah, you know yeah. At that moment, I really didn't hear nothing about AAU. It just was like, you know, maybe a coach may have had a son that played and he wanted to get a team together for his son. And, you right. know, that's how that was. Uh, so, you, uh, we're going we're gonna to jump forward to, like, let's get to high school. You say you're from a uh, Smoky City area, Valentine mm -hmm. area. Yep. And we already know what school is over there in that area. <laughs> yep, north side. North side. But you end up going to Craigmont. Tell yep. us how that happened and why. So it was like I kind of wanted I wanted to create my own identity for one. You know, Marvin Neal, like I said, we played together when we was young. Great player. You know, much respect to my boy. You know, we was great friends. Still is to this day, you know. Um, he played for north side. And so it's like, you know, Marvell want to score, you know, he, that's his, that's, I felt like that was his team. So I'm like, there's no point in me going over there trying to, you know, go play in tag team with him. I'm going to go, you know, over here to Craig, my works where, where my dad stayed at. And I'm going to create my own identity. I'm going a, I'm to a try to have my own team. And so, you know, I went to Craig, my middle. Um, I graduated from Gordon Elementary and went to Craig, my middle. And, you know, you know, middle school for me was just like, to be honest, I didn't even take basketball serious at that moment. I just was so much better than everybody. It was just like, everybody would be like, man, the young dude from um, down down to middle school, he gonna be cold, da, da, da. And, you know, in North Memphis, they used to call me Lil Penny. Um, by the time I get hit eighth grade, I played like one varsity game and it was against Wooddale. And I had like 12 points mm -hmm. first game and I'm in eighth grade. And so everybody, you know, everybody in the school just kind of knew that, you know, okay, you know, you they got that. a young kid that's coming from middle school that's going to be pretty good. You know, as to how good I was going to be, nobody knew. Um, so like I said, you know, when I was in middle school, I just played because I was really, really good at it. Didn't really take it serious. So you you get to Craig Munt. When you get to Craig Munt, uh, what what one team may say, man? Huh, I'm gonna show you how it's done. I'm I'm gonna be. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how to lead the team. I didn't have nobody telling me how to lead the team. I did have one person that stayed around the corner from my dad, who I used to, who was the point guard, one of the point guards at the time, Stephen Payne, and you know Marlon Dawson was older guy as well who played at Craig Munt. Keyron Shine stayed down the street from my dad. You know, all those guys kind of helped me in different ways. You know, Kieran with his work ethic and how good he was, Marlon the same way. He ended up getting really a lot, a whole lot better. You know, once he left um, Craig Munt, um, and Steven just was a, a hard worker. You know, so I kind of like looked at those guys as well. Um, but you know, we had a team full of guys that were hard workers. You know, Steven Jackson. We had Doc Maverick from. Uh, Douglas area, um, but I, I kind of felt like I was a little different than all those guys um, when it come, when it came to the game itself. Cause you know it was just like you know you got people that say they love basketball, but I was like love basketball. It's like that's what I be telling these kids nowadays. Like you gonna play basketball, you gotta love the game. 
You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it was just, I don't care if I got on punishment. You ain't gonna stop me from going back outside. I'll take a whooping before, you know, I just stay in the house and not not play no. basketball. Like that's how it was for me, you know. So, um, like I said, like early on, you know, a lot of guys around the school kind of like just knew who I was and was like, man, little bug gonna be hooping, little bug gonna be hooping. So, but like I said, at that point, I had to see it for myself in order for me to just actually really take it serious. I just loved it so much to the point where I just played it all the time. You just having to be good at it. Exactly. Ninth grade, are you uh, are you getting, so you walk to the, the doors of Craig Month, are you getting a chance, are you knowing like, man, I'm a star, I'm gonna be a star. Though. Nah, that wasn't even the case. That's the, that's, and, and you know, that's what tripped me out about a lot of these kids now. It's like they automatically thinking that they are like, you know, entitled to something. Man, I walked in with older guys that was that was older, stronger, been there, more trusted from the coach. And I'd be lucky to get maybe seven, eight minutes. I was gonna score <laughs> in them seven, eight minutes. I was gonna get my name in the paper. That was, that was all I cared yeah, about, too. getting the name in the paper. I was gonna score. But you know, like I said early on, I, I ain't even take it serious. You know, I got to high school and um, rest in peace to my one of my best friends. Everybody know him as Elo, but his name, you know, I, I called him Muhammad. His name was Muhammad Ibn el -Amin. And you know, it's the same guy that Moneybag be talking about, Elo. Um, me and him was real good friends back in the day. And you know, coming from the family he came from, you know, you, you, you're a product of your environment. And so he seen his older brothers, you know, be in the streets and that's what he wanted to do. So when me and him, me and him got friends, became friends, he seen me playing basketball. And so he tried to play, but you know, you know how that it goes. Right. You know, he ain't gonna go how he wanted to go. So, you know, he stopped playing and me, I get to the point where I'm in high school now and I'm running, we doing all this running and stuff. And I'm like, hold up, I ain't used to this. So I quit. Mm -hmm. I quit in the ninth grade early on before the season started. And me and him just, you know, we just out in the streets, just not doing crazy stuff. We just, you know, not even, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like doing stuff kids do. And, um, you know, I remember my brother told me, he came and, and he was like, man, what you doing? He, like, I'm supposed to be at practice. I'm like, man, they, they run too much. I stopped, I stopped playing. You know, he was like, oh, no. Nah. He was like, man, get on, get in the car. He took me back to the gym, took me to Craig Mutt, and Coach Stokes, rest in peace, Stokes. Um, he was like, oh, before you can get back on the team, you gotta give me 1,500 bleachers. And I'm like, what? And I did all 1,500 before I could even get back on the team, and you know, the rest was the rest was history, man. Like, you know, we didn't win you know, how I wanted to win. But, you know, I can say that, you know what I'm saying? I played every game like it was my last. So ninth grade, you, like you said, you're not getting a lot of playing time, but you're getting some playing time. You having to, you having to realize like, hey, man, I'm, I'm the man still, but there's other people here the man. I got to follow some rules and guidelines now. There's some structure to just, it's some structure to this hooping. It just ain't me just going out there thinking I can do what I want to do. And so you found you 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 finally fit figuring it out. Talk about going to your tenth grade season, because I mean at this point you you, you should have had a wake up call like yep. okay, I I ain't wasted I ain't wasted a whole year pretty much. And I ain't wasted it, but you know I mm -hmm. I ain't give it. If it was an eighty percent year. It should have been a hundred, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So talk about going to the 10th grade year and the mindset that you had going into the 10th grade year. Well, my 10th grade year, um, I just knew that it had to be a year where I was going to either start or play at big minutes. It's just like I worked my tail off that summer. And it's crazy because when I look back and say I worked my tail off that summer, 
it, it wasn't even really me just really working like on my game game. It was more of me working on my athleticism, my body, you know, being able to be physically challenged and meet the challenge. Um, and the next year, I think I surprised a whole lot of people because, you know, all the good schools, White Station, Raleigh, man, Hamilton, Bartlett, like all of these good schools, East, I'm giving it to these folks. Mm. And I'm a sophomore. Like, yeah, I'm here. Like, and folks was like, my little hunt killed them folks tonight. My little hunt killed, like they, and it's like, the confidence was through the roof because, you know, we had another player on our team that was good, you know, uh, Steven Jackson. Left-hand guy was really good. Um, but it was just like, it always found its way back to me. And, you know, I felt like that was that was the beginning of something special as far as my career goes at, at Craig Munt. You know, um, all the guys, all the older guys respected me because, you know, they knew I worked hard. Um, the coach, you know, he allowed me to, to, to actually showcase what I could actually do. So, I mean, you know, that was, like I said, that was the beginning. So, Tim Gray, yeah, you turn up, you, you turn up. It's, hey, it's my show, Craig Munt, my school, man. Uh, are y'all winning at this point? We are winning sometimes. And we just, it's, it's like we couldn't get over the hump. Okay. It was like we had the talent, but we wasn't talented enough right. all the way around. Um, guys play hard, but it's just sometimes playing hard just don't get you what you need to get skill-wise. Right. You know, you can play hard all you want to, but if you can't knock down shots and you can't make open shots when you need to, that's going to hunt you. Right. Are you going to any uh, ABCD camps or Nike camps? I went to – okay, so that's not realized winning. <clears throat> that's not really, really realized. Like, outside of Memphis, I got to step it up. I ended up going to the big Nike camp, got invited to that. Um, my ninth grade year going to the 10th grade. Mm -hmm. And I walk into camp and I'm looking around, I'm like, okay. A lot of kids, you know, tall, my height, shorter, you know, tall and like, and we get the plan. You know, I'm holding my own, of course. But I'm also seeing guys that's just like exceptionally better. And I'm like, man, D Brown, Mari mm. Stoudemire, Shaw McKents, Luther Head, Darren Williams. I think at the time, Marcel Jones was going to Maryland, who went to Maryland. I think he probably might have been like the number one player in the nation. Mm. By the 12th grade year, that changed. You know, of course, right. people caught up to him. But um, you know, you got guys like Shadley Randolph, you know, that was like mm -hmm. one and two with Amari, Yusuf Baker, like it was just a whole it was just a bunch of people, a bunch of guys that were really good and then showed me like, dang. That when I first knew that the competition was bigger than just Memphis. Right. It's like you got people all around the world that's really, really good that you would never know about unless you got out to those camps. And like I said, at that point, I hadn't played ninth grade AAU or none of that. So it was like, dang, you know, I just got to get better. Um, so that was also a wake up call as well, but a great experience. Mm. Um, who, who was that one person at that camp that you had to hold? That you're like, man, I just cannot stay in front of this man. I'm like, it's, it's moving. Might have been D Brown. D Brown. Yeah, because we became real good friends after that camp and we kept in touch in the best way we could, you know, back then. Yeah. <laughs> you know like what I'm saying? Phone call, yeah. Yeah. So um probably it was D Brown. He was so fast. Um had the long socks back then like he did in college. Like he's you know, he was so fast. Um that probably was that probably was the only person. Everybody else was kinda like, you know, you can manage. Right. So you have a, a good 10th, you have a breakout 10th grade year. You talk around the city, 
Are you starting to get offers? Are you starting to get interest? Um, I, I, you know, I probably skipped the part. Um, my first, my first official letter in interest was from Georgetown University when mm. I was in the eighth grade. Mm. I was in the eighth grade and, you know, um, was playing with the older guys, high school guys. And Georgetown was there to see, you know, through the relationship with my coach, he had, you know, coach like, hey man, come check some of my guys out. You know, I got, you know, one kid, Steven, there. He's, he was there to see Steve. Mm. Seeing me, was like, wait, who is that kid? It's like that little skinny kid over there that's, you know, who is that? He's like, oh man, you know, that's, that's Jeremy Hunt. He, he in the eighth grade, he'll be in high school next year. And he was like, hold up, he's only in the eighth grade? He's like, yeah. The very following week, got a letter from Georgetown. Uh, how, what, what, was, what was your reaction to it? You know, at that point, you really don't understand it. Right. And you, you know, you young, you ain't got nobody really telling you about the recruitment process and all that. So I really didn't, you know, my mom was more happy. And I was just like, oh, for real? I'm like, dang. You know, I, I ain't thinking about college at that moment. I'm thinking right. about high school. You right. know what I'm saying? So. Right. You know, but it was, you know, looking back on it, it was a huge deal. That was a huge, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, after that, you know, you'll get little letters from, because we used to go to like little camps. Tennessee had been interested for a long time because we used to go to the Tennessee camp in the summertime and play, you know, up there against teams and up there and all that. And so they was interested for a long time as well. And little Lipscomb, and Tennessee Tech, and all Shame. the, te- you know, all the teams yeah, in Tennessee, boy. you know what I'm saying? So. That was, that was, you know, it got to the point where, you know, I has, I was getting so many letters. Well, we'll get to that part. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll it, that part. it's 11th grade year. We uh we go into 11th grade year. Uh, like you said, the team, not the best team, not the worst team. We play hard. What What's going, what's your mindset going to the 11th grade year? Because like I said, you ain't got you ain't went to the Nike camp. You played against some of the best of the best. What like what, what what's going on in the 11th grade year, and how are you like my, elevating your game? My 11th grade year, <clears throat> um, was more about how well could I be a leader. Like mm. it was actually actually my team at that point. Okay, you know I I, I recruited um Chris Bullard, Tonio. Fletch. I, I recruited a couple guys come over and play. We had a good team. You know, we was we was and it was still like that same situation of getting over the hump. Who was who was uh putting y'all out that y'all can surpass? It wasn't nobody that was just like anybody special like putting us out. It was just like you know how it is, you lose in the first round of the district. It's over with. It's over with. So mm-hmm. I don't know why we couldn't get over that hump, man. It was I don't know what happened if that 11, my 11th grade year. Um, Y'all went out first round 11th grade year too? Mm-hmm. Damn. So you went out. I th- ain't never been past the first round. Damn. And, and so with that being said, right now, you know, a lot of kids are just like, you know what, man, I'm, I'm out of here. Why you didn't leave? I almost did. Where were you with a win? Raleigh. Legion. Ah, uh, okay. Cause you know, I, I you know, me and me, Scooter, his brother, Chris. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, everybody, you know, they, they like family. They like, right. you know, my cousins. And so I used to be over there all the time, over their house and, you know, hanging around Chris, be around Chris all the time and school them. And I was just like, man, I got to at least experience something different than just losing in the first round. And I was dead close to just going to Raleigh. What, 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 what stopped you? I, I just thought that that would be the easy route. Yeah. That would be easy to go over there and try to play with those guys. Cause they had a squad. Like after Scooter left, they still played. They yeah. still had, you know, Shante Wells, they had Chris, they had Derek Chu, Donald. Like they still had a squad. And I, and I was cool with all those guys. So. You would have fit right in. I would have fit right in. But, you know, you know, it. it I just stayed at Craig Munt and just, you know, hey, I'm going to fight it out over here. 
So is 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 the summer going into the twelfth grade year? What's are you playing AAU at this point? So I started playing AAU at tenth grade. Right. Tenth grade. Who you play for? Memphis YOMCA. Okay. Yeah. So um, my first year, I think it was what was it? Ninth grade going to tenth grade. Yeah. Sixteen U. No, fifteen. U. So you you playing AAU your tenth grade year, right? You said yep. you playing with the Y. How did they come about? Um, they came over uh, to to one of my games, Coach William Anderson, D. Burchett, Jerry Dover, and they was already playing for the Y. Mm. And, you know, they invited me to the tryouts or whatever and said they wanted me to play for the Y. And that's how that happened. I ended up going and, um, you know, it, it went well. This shows your 10th grade. Yeah, it was summer. actually my 10th grade. Going to eleven. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so, um, you know, it was cool. It was a little different. Um, playing with a bunch of guys. The you know, group. that's good. Yeah. You know, I think we had a good team. We had a good team. And um, did it make you less of a dog playing with other people, or did nah. it like did One you thing, try to figure out how to be? still stand out and still play with other guys. You know, one thing I tell people all the time, if you it, you it. Right. And it, it isn't, it's nothing nobody can do about it. You can't hide it. They can't hide it. You can't run from it. If you the alpha and you the dog, it's going to show. Right. <laughs> and like I said, man, I, I – I was just blessed enough, man, to just to have that ability of being the, him. Right. Like, it wasn't nothing that I was trying to do differently than them other guys. I was just, I played hard. I made shots. I was crazy athletic. I handled the ball well enough so you ain't finna take it. And it's just like, what can he not do? Would you have played with like an A team that wasn't good where you could have got 40, 30? Where uh, you could have got your reps versus playing with a team where they already stacked. But it's crazy though, because they was already stacked and I still went and was the best player on the team. Yeah. So it's like, I can't really say I, if I would have done anything differently yeah. because I got you. Yeah. it ended up being the same. Yeah, it ended up working out. Like not trying to be like on no like, cocky stuff, just keeping it real, like, you know, I was on those teams where, like, bro, it, man, my my 11th grade year, the 12th grade year, bro, I averaged, like, at least in the Nationals, I averaged, like, 30. What, what's the recruiting process like? Because if, if you, like, you're not, like you said, your son hit you up 8th grade, 10th grade going to 11th grade, you saying you, you averaging like 30 in nationals. No, so my 11th grade year going to my 12th grade summer was when I went crazy. Oh, uh, okay, okay. My but, 10th grade year was just cool. It was just like, you know. I opened them. Yeah, it wasn't even I opened it. It was just like, we was we was, a, we was a pretty good team and I ended up going and playing up 11th grade Peace Jam with mm. Ernie Shelton them. You know, and I ain't even play that much then. You know, it's it's they low you. People don't understand it's a different it's a different speed, it's a different caliber of basketball when you go from one grade to the next on that level. Right. I mean, you 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 can get away with it in Memphis and be like, okay, I'm gonna play up 10th grade ball, I'm in the ninth grade, I'm gonna play up. And if you're good, you'll be cool on that. Right. But you can be good in Memphis and play up 10th grade and be cool, but good in Memphis playing up nationally. It's going to be different. And it's going to be really different now. Right. Because with all the, you know, holdbacks and it's going to be real different. But back then, you know, it was different then. So I just imagine how different it is now. Right. Uh, are you getting any offers your first year? Playing the AU season? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like all of the, all of the South, People in the South, like it, Georgia, Adam, all of them was like sending letters and stuff like that. Like I still got the whole book in my house. My mm. mom kept up with everything, mm. like all the Nike invitationals, NBA camp stuff. All she kept up with everything. So I was still getting, you know, offers and looked at, and you know, people was interested, you know. But that next year, 
Oh, Turned up. Oh my God. It was it was it was crazy. Who it you, was crazy. Who, who you go against in Nationals that we somebody that we might know? Man, I played against Eagle Dollar and and um um Shannon Brown mm. on the same team. They had some other guys that played on Illinois University team and they had, they had some other guys. I think Roger Powell played on that team. They they had a bunch of other guys there from the Chi Town area. But I played against um uh Sheldon Williams, Kevin Booker, uh, D'Angelo Alexander. They all was on one team now. Mm. So Kevin Booker book out was the center, the, the the white boy that played center for Oklahoma. He was seven right. feet. You know, Sheldon Williams, six ten. They three man was like six six, and D'Angelo was like six three, and they point guard was like six two. Um we played against Bracey Wright that went to uh Indiana. Um Jeff Horner that went to Iowa and the other I forgot the other power forward that played with him. We played their team in the Elite Eight to go to the Final Four. And we beat all of them. And like you said, like man, I got Derek Byers, Tim Barr, Clyde Wade, Andre Allen, DJ White, Johnny Jackson. Um Man, who else was on that team? Dwayne Lee. I got the best of the best on my team. Mm. And my first two games in Nationals, Man. 40. 40. 40. Out of, after the games, are the coaches like approach? They not approach you. At that point, it's, it's, it's like. It's whatever. Yeah. It's, we got to talk to him. Yeah. Ain't no not talking to him. Cincinnati yet. on me. Tough. Like. Who your top five? Like you it, just back then, like who your I top five? I ain't even five? have a top five, but I can say like, you know, I was getting recruited from all, everybody. And uh, uh, like kind of towards the end, North Carolina came through. Mm. Um, But I, I, you know, like I said, I always kept Memphis in there. Cincinnati, Tennessee, you know, the, the, the schools that's like close by. I had Kentucky on me. Um, I had Alabama, I had Ole Miss, you know, Arkansas. I had all those schools. Easy. Are South you, Florida. Are you uh when you're growing up, are you like, man, I gotta be a tiger? Like I wanna be a tiger. Yeah, you, you you wanna be a tiger for sure because of what Penny did. Right. Um Penny was just uh and not even Penny though, bro. Like some other guys you got other Penny. guys like Chris Gunn, and Cedric Henderson, mm -hmm. um, Lorenzo Wright, right. uh, Andre sure. Turner. You know, uh, man. You know, even when Keyron went there, he had he had a pretty. You know, you had Snap Hunter who mm -hmm. was tough, tough. You know, Scooter. Like you right. looking at those guys that. You know, Mingo Johnson. I'm watching these folks play. I'm like, I remember when them folks had Converse on. Um, you know, Billy Smith, like, catching lobs. You know, Michael Wilson. The list goes on, man. John Gales, Omar Sneed. Like, I'm watching these folks like, yeah, you know. Be a tiger one day. Wow. Like, and, and it, you know, it kind of. When I was in high school, my name went from Lil Penny to Skinny Penny. So it's crazy how some people still call me that to this day. They'll see me like, Skinny Penny, what's up? But, um, man, just for – I always wanted to be the type of player that does everything. I want to be able to pass, make great decisions, score, right. you know, be athletic, dunk on people. Um, you know, make threes. Like I, I wanted to be all of that in one, and that was what Penny was. His IQ was through the roof. Like, and I felt like that was my game. You know, and of course, like you know, I had, but I had a, I had a Kobe mentality though. Mm. Kill or be killed. Is is Penny reaching out to you? No, nah, that's that's me and Penny got a. Like that's bro, mm -hmm. big bro. Like, you know, he knows, you know what I'm saying? Like that I looked up to him and you know what I'm saying? Like we, we, we great. It's no, 
nothing that I can't, you know, I can go up to the University of Memphis and, you know, we have conversations about basketball all the time. Like, it ain't nothing that I can't ask. I can go up there and, you know, pitch some stuff off of him, like, bring, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. great guy, man. About this? Talking about uh, this year? No, 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 no. I was just saying, you can go up there and ask him, like, what you yeah, think about yeah. this? Yeah, yeah, like, and... you know, I can't, you know, it, it's, it's, love, it's all love between me and him, bro. It's like, He's a great person, dog. Like people don't really get to, they don't get to see like that type of him in that type of setting. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody see a coach, but they just see the coach. They don't see the coach off the floor. Right. You know what I'm saying? The father figure to so many different people. The, you know, friend. They don't. They don't see that person because you know you don't get to see that person. Nah, you don't. Dude, exclusive, low key, bro. Exactly. Like, not not even low key. He is so. Uh, you said you got a relationship with Penny. Is that one of the reasons why you chose to go to the University of Memphis over Cincinnati? Yeah, I mean, I think being, like I said, you know, having that having that nickname coming up, Skinny Penny, and me seeing him, you know, for Orlando, for Memphis, like hometown hero, hero right. like who ain't at that age, who right. ain't want to go, you know what I'm saying? You, you buying yeah. your sneakers. Who ain't gonna want to be like Penny? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy. So when did you sign with Memphis? I signed with Memphis my at the beginning of my senior year. This at the be, before the before the before the season started, I signed with signed with Memphis at the beginning. Just go ahead, get it over with. Yeah, you know, I, it's crazy. I ain't going no visits. Mm. I ain't go to no visits. I ain't go to no because I already had my mind locked in on what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go. So, I mean, it was kind of like pointless to even go on a visit because you might mess around and go on one of them visits. And now you go on them visits and them coaches gonna make it seem like it's this and it's that, and then all of a sudden, first day of practice, you can be like, "Hold up, where was this person?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> like now, all of a sudden, it's this mean, you know, and coach. And not only that, you know, like now you able to like go on social media or go on the internet and find a player and see, man, is Coach Ryan, bro, or is yeah. this really how he is? So much stuff to change, but yeah, I mean, I just kind of already knew. Um, one of the assistant coaches at Memphis, Coach Rockaforte, he was like, you know, you don't even know this yet. I've been in 10th grade, I was at Peach Jam. He was like, you don't even know this yet, but you're going to be a Memphis Tiger. I'm yeah. telling you, he was saying this back in, you know, right. and so. So you get to, you know, you graduate high school, you sign to University of Memphis. What's that first practice like when you get to there? Uh, Cause you, at this point, you up there with Calipari now. I didn't even, you know, my first year, I didn't practice until the day before we went to play Syracuse. Mm. And the reason being is because I scored too high on the SAT and they they made they were trying to make me take it over again. Mm. <laughs> and I was just like, well, for one, Kyle was like, nah. Don't you take know, it again. He ain't taking it again, you know. The score is the score. So the whole time while like from when the first time I stepped foot on campus to the day before the game, I was just in the gym working out, mm. different weights. Just watching the team, I wasn't even able to practice. I wasn't eligible. So you still, you you still had the mindset to say, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just be prepared just in case. You ain't got no choice. It's like at that point, you in college, so you gotta do exactly what they want you to do, which is like I was small, so I had to lift weights, you know, with the strength coach, and you know, it was just like you anxious, but at the same time, you gotta be patient because it's out of your hands. And it's easier said than done because, you know, coming from playing ball all the time and now you got to wait. It's right. like, so. You, uh, so you said you didn't get a chance to play to the Syracuse game. When was the Syracuse game? I know you know the date, the time, the start. I, I don't know. know the date. I know it was 2002. It was, it was, it was the Coaches versus Cancer Classic oh, okay. game. So y'all in New York. In New York. Madison Square Garden, and Burks was ineligible. Chris Massey was ineligible. So that's the starting point guard and the mm -hmm. starting five. So coach was like, hey, you know, you got to run point guard this game. 
And I'm like, what? Oh, you started? Yeah, I started at point. Oh, okay. And so, you know, the, the, you know, the game starts. Jump ball, we get the ball. First play for Earl Barron. I dribble to the left wing. He's supposed to come off a slice screen to the block. I'm dribbling. Boom, ball bounce off my foot. I look at coach and like, I'm so nervous. Coach is like, it's okay, just calm down. You'll be all right. So he believed in you from the jump. Like he, Coach, Coach, Coach Calipari hands you the keys from him. Yeah. Like I'm rocking with Hunt. I mean, at that point, it was like, what else? Who else is gonna run point? Right. You know, Andre Allen. Andre Allen went there yet? Ah, okay, okay, he went okay, there okay, yet. Okay, That was okay. 2002. Okay. Dre was still in high school. Okay, okay. I okay. think Dre didn't come for another two years. Okay, okay. So, um, you know, once I made my first shot, it was all weird. I was like, man, it's like practice. I was like, all right, let's get busy. So Melo was killing us though, first half. Melo, Melo, Melo was, Melo had like 21 in the first half. Mm. You know, he was living up to that freshman height. And, but, you know, I kept my foot on the gas. You know, I was shooting threes from like the Madison Square Garden sign. Just, you know, I had an all around game that game. I had seven rebounds, seven assists, uh, 19 points. We held Melo to seven points in the second half. He ended up with 28. Um, and we won the game. I got MVP. And, you know, I just remember Coach Kyle just coming up to me to, like, after the game, he was like, man, kid, you have big balls. <laughs> because I was making and taking some like shots that you wouldn't normally see a freshman take. Mm. And so, you know, I just was like, the big moments, man, just just stepped up. Like, you know, I can't remember a time in big moments throughout my whole career that I didn't step up and, and you know, do be productive. You, you hit, so this Madison Square Garden, we got Dickie Vatil there, right? He, oh baby, huh? Man, I'm talking about, Diaper dandy, baby. This kid, Jeremy Hunt out of Memphis, is sensational. Like, I'm talking about folks texting my phone, get back to my phone. I got 50 text messages, 90 calls. Like, I'm like, they like, go, oh, you out of here after this year. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You know how folks from Memphis yeah, get Yeah, you got to. Bro, Dick Vitale was all on your. Like you, you, you gone, you gone. Like homies in jail, like, bro, I can't believe, like, you know what I'm saying? It was so surreal. But that game, I broke my foot. Mm. Yep, that game, I broke my foot. Um, I broke my fifth metal torso bone, um, which is the bone that go across like your pinky foot. Mm. And so, you know, I was just like, I was gonna try to play through it, but Milt Wagner called, um, told our physio lady and was like, hey, JB, you gotta take him to the doctor. Um, I think something on his foot. So when they did the x-rays, they said my foot was fractured, so I had to have surgery on it. Mm. So I had surgery on that, and it was like a six to, to eight week, you know, process. And so uh, that was, that was, that was mentally, that was like mentally challenging, being that I had never been hurt like that before. And it's just like, bro, you just you had like a, like a crazy little ride, like from, from the time you still foot on campus, saying your your, your score is too high, then getting a chance to start, uh, mm -hmm. my the Madison Square Garden game, Dick Vatel, you have a breakout game, boom, foot paper. Hunt foot and I'm like, wow. So, like you said, you mentally you kind of missed up because you haven't had surgery and stuff. What like, what's your mindset like, and who's helping you? You know, get through this at the time. I mean, you know, just had to do what I had to do. I had to have surgery, and 
you know, that was an opportunity for me to gain some weight anyway. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you know, I was just lifting weights and, you know, just waiting on the return. And then, you know, by the time I ended up coming back, we was at Arkansas, um, my foot got infected. Mm. So I had to have an emergency surgery, which was just basically cutting my foot back open and letting the blood and the pus run up out of my foot. Um, which was another little minor setback. And then, you know, by the time, you know, I ended up coming back and being, you know, feeling good, we ended up losing to um, Arizona State. They had Ike Diagu. Mm, yep. uh, we lost to them in the first round. You know, it was an up and down year. I had some good games that year too. Well, um, what's another good game you had? That year? Mm hmm I think um, I played really, really good against Louisville, mm. in Louisville, against Reese Gaines and all them. I missed 10 free throws that game. Mm. And I still had 19 points. And I was like, I look back on that game and I'm looking at it, I'm like, why was I shooting free throws like that? It's just like crazy how you miss free throws. Ten, I missed 10 free throws. And that was one of my better games that year. Um, so, you know, I come back the next year but before you go to like to the initial, are you looking at the mock draft? Like, are you looking to see? Nah, I ain't paying no attention to that. You mm. know, at that time, I knew the injuries was gonna kind of like yeah. affect that. You know, me and Melo was talking all the time. We would talk like almost every week. You know, because his team was winning, my team, our team was winning. And we was kind of like thinking like, which one of us gonna get in the ranking first? You know, and they ended up winning the national championship. You know, of course they. He ended up declaring for the draft that right. year. Um, but, you know, I was just more focused on trying to, like, get healthy 100% and get back to, you know, how I was. And so, like, that summer, um, that's when I really knew Took it up and understood how to work out. And I'm not sure if that's the same summer that Kobe said he don't work out, he black out. Mm-hmm. But I did the same thing. And I said, man, you know what? I'm finna get in this gym and I'm finna work on everything that Kobe work on. Fadeaways, all that stuff. One dribble pull-ups, like all of this. I was in the gym by myself plenty of times, just working mm -hmm. on my game, working on my game. Going to hoops, destroying folks. Like we used to play ball, like Verts, we we we'll drive all around the city and just go to different gyms and just hoop. My folks don't do that no more. Bro. They don't do it no more. They don't do it no more. And, um, man, get to preseason. Same thing happened. Another injury. We running. Conditioning. Same foot. Same in. And so it was just one of them things where it's like, man, golly. Feeling good, got every, you know, got athleticism. Yep, and so, you know, come back from that and we playing good. I'm talking about we is playing really good. I think Rodney Carney had got hurt. Um, and it was me, Burks, and Anthony Bryce, we was like the three guards. Mm -hmm. Man, we was playing so good and um, end of the season came around. Uh, in practice, it was the day before we was playing TCU. We was gonna play TCU for senior night. Mm -hmm. Jump stop in the lane. Knee gave out, tore my ACL. Yeah. And so, at that particular moment, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you just, I'm just like, you just there. I don't know. I just don't know what happened. I told the lady to, hey, just give me some ice. You go back out there? Nah. Ah, uh, okay. I came to the sideline. Told the trainer just give me some ice on. You know. Next morning, I wake up, knee big, swole. Tried to get up, just fell straight to the ground. Mm. Went to the doctor. 
get an MRI and say, yeah, you got a torn ACL. So I'm like, what's that? <laughs> so I said, you're going to be out six to eight months. I'm like, what? So I go through the whole process of that, um, trying to, you know, stay upbeat, try to stay upbeat, just trying to go through the whole recovering process of, of, of getting back. So when that happens, um, I end up coming back my junior year. So you ain't had a two foot, three foot surgeries. Three foot surgery. But I'm just saying, and I'm just talking about this sophomore year alone. You you had the foot injury and the ACL. And them two injuries in one year. Mm-hmm. My how you how you find the 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 motivation, motivation to even want to come back and do it again, bro. Man, that's why that's why I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. That's why I'm one of Coach Cal's favorite players. Mm. Because of the perseverance from the injuries to the trouble, you know, to be sitting here today, being able to tell a story of me going through all of this and going through all that and not letting it define me as a person right. and letting letting those situations happen and letting me be able to still come back and do the things that I do for the city, for kids, to this, it just make people look at you like, dang. Right. This man has persevered from so many different situations throughout his life and look at him now. When when I sit up and say, well, you look at me now, and I say, man, God not finished. Because it's still work to be done. It's still a lot of stuff that he has for me. But he has it for me to offer to them. And whoever them is, <laughs> we never know. Right. Because my mindset was just totally different. Um, everybody got a dream of going to the NBA, of right. course. If you're playing basketball and you really passionately love basketball, you want to make it to the NBA. Yeah. But I never prayed that. I always prayed for God to like make me successful in whichever way I could be successful in so I can be a blessing to other people. In whichever way that may be. That may be monetarily. That may be, you know, even this. You know, right. there may be a conversation. Or I might say something to a kid and he might take what I say to him on that day and run with it, you know. I always try to be a humble person because that's what I grew up seeing out of, out of my parents. It's like, stay humble regardless of what you got, what fame, how much money. Like, just be a humble person. And, you know, it'd be so crazy how people, will, you know, they don't know me from, you know, a can of paint. And they'll meet me and they'll have a conversation with me and they'll be like, man. I thought you was like this, bro. I thought yeah, you was like, like this. And it's just like, man, looks can be deceiving for real. Never judge a book by its cover. But at the same time, once people get to know you and see the type of person that you is, they be like, dang. They be like, man, I'm in hunt and, you know, he is. Uh, yeah, I, this is what I've been telling my homeboy <laughs> the whole week, bro. I'm like, bro, not only that, like, I tell people, like, man, you one of my favorite Tigers, bro. The, the guys from Memphis, bro, they're my favorite Tigers, like, you know, of course you, but Andre Allen for sure. My mom from Cave Homes, mm-hmm. and my mom used to talk about how she used to have to put eat water with her cereal and stuff growing up. So I'm like, man, Andre Allen. I don't know if he had to do that, but I'm knowing the environment is tough, and he getting a chance to make it out. So that's mm-hmm. what it is. That's why it be like all the guys from Memphis, my favorite tire because it's like we they not come from no. No, like no, no silver spoons or they coming from some some things that they ain't had to uh, adore, overcome, yeah, man. overcome. But like people might laugh at me now, but Pierre now, I, I'm a big fan of Pierre now. Like he might not been much at the University of Memphis though, but like my he kind, he represented. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He could have yeah. went anywhere else first and yeah. probably had a way better career. Bro. So you know, like yeah, the guys from the M like. My favorite Tigers, like you said, but, and then you being from the M, 
dealing with all those injuries, like, man, we don't know what you went through in life. Them, them probably like them same injuries you went through with basketball. You probably went through like some of those same type of things in life, but not basketball wise, if that makes sense. Yeah. So. Like I said, like you said, it's just perseverance. Want to come back. Like, that's why you say you want to coach Cal's favorite. So, I mean, we could continue talking about the University of Memphis. You turn to ACL. Mm -hmm. you come, come back from that. Come back from that. This is your um, third year at this point, right? Yep. Come back from that. Um, next year, that's when CDR them came in. Mm -hmm. um, Rodney Carton still there? Or he Rodney gone? Rodney Carton is there. Yep. Andre Allen there? Andre Allen came okay. in that year. Sean Williams. Sean Williams, okay. Joey Dorsey, Antonio Anderson, that whole group. Okay. And um, who, who are you taking under your wings when you get there? I took all of them under my wings. Mm -hmm. I took all of them to the hood. Took them to the hood. Um, took them to my uncle's house. We kicked it, you know. You always want to make them feel like they're at home. You know what I'm saying? Because you know it's home away from home at this point. You right. have to make it home away from home. So um, what happened that year was us going out one night and when you went to this one club, you had to wear your hat a certain way, which was straight if you're gonna have a hat on. You know, so later on that night, you know, somebody took my hat off my head playing around, and I just threw it on any kind of way. So the security guard, you know, walked up to me, snatched my wristband off, was being all aggressive and like, man, you got to go. Told you about your hat. Da, da, da. I'm like, ah. I'm laughing because at this point it's like 2 in the morning. It's like, okay, that's cool. So I say something to Chance. I'm like, yo, Chance. And for the people that don't know Chance, that's Tracy McGrady, brother. So I'm like, Mac, man, they kicking me out. I'm laughing. Cause it's really not, it's, it's not a big deal to me, but you know, I guess, you know, when it comes to stuff like that, bodyguards. So he, he didn't shove me in my back. And I turned around and looked like, bro, you don't gotta do all that. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, I'm not trying to stop you from leaving. I'm cool about, it. I'm, I'm, it's two in the morning. Right, I need to get We on. got pro day the next day. Oh, uh, okay. So it's like, whatever. He grabs me and puts me like in this little hole with my hands above my head and starts slamming me up against the elevator for no reason. Man. No reason at all. And so, like, at that point, my old teammates, like Ant Rice, Root, all of them is in there, too. So they seeing this happen, and they're like, man, he ain't even do nothing. They was trying to get on the elevator with me. And the dude was like, no, y'all got to take the stairs. We finna take him downstairs. He leaving. So on the elevator, I'm just telling him like, man, I'm finna, <laughs> I'm finna sue y'all. Right. Cause like you ain't had no reason for doing that. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, I, and let me, let me rewind it back. My uncle told me, don't go downtown and get in no trouble. Mm. <laughs> and so, like I said, you know, once he, once he pushed me out, you know, on Bill Street, I turned around and was looking. I'm like, bro, like, why did you even do this? You ain't even have to put your hands on me like this. Right. I wasn't resisting for you kicking me out or what. I was, finna, I was cool with leaving. So when he ran up, he said something, and I just stuff just hit him. Yeah. And and. That situation happened and he was a student of Memphis. So, you know, he went to Virginia. Yep. And and I ended up, you know, getting suspended from the team that year. You had a whole year. But it was a blessing in disguise because like I said, I had just told my ACL the year before. And when I tore my ACL, if I had a came back at that particular moment, if I had a came back at that particular moment that year, I would, I mean, who's to say how good of a year or season I was going to have. Right. So I'm looking at it like this. I'm like, okay, it's a blessing in disguise. I got suspended. I got my degree that year, 
but it also gave me time to heal as far as my ACL properly. Mm-hmm. So I'm just working out, working out, working out, working out. I went to Mike Miller house one time and I was watching him work out. And he was shooting, just shooting, making threes. And I'm looking and I'm like, just studying. I'm like, I'm like, man. So I'm thinking, I'm like, I go up to him, I say, man, what, what, what's, what's going through your mind when you're shooting the ball every time you shoot? Like, I just try to shoot the same shot every time. Um, try to use my legs. You have to use more legs when you get tired because that's where our power comes from. So I'm like, all right. And I'm asking him, how many shots do you? He's like, well, this is just like, you know, after I'm done with everything, I just come and get some more shots up. So it's like, you know, 250, 300, whatever. He's like, but normally on a, you know, regular, you can just make, for you, it's like make five. So I'm like, all right. So I went to the gym every night from that day forward. I told my homeboy, I said, bro, we finna go to the gym every night. And I'm finna make 500 threes a night. And I went to that gym every single night, except for like maybe Sundays or something like that. Made 500 threes a night the whole year. Mm. including still being like a part of the team, but not a part of the team. Right. In practice, you know, at the games, da, 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 whatever. Working out and just off me alone doing that, my jumper is just, it just became. Pure. Yeah. yeah and so it's like when I came, when I when I graduated that year, which is what the president said she wanted. Like, next time I see you, I want to see you walking across the stage. Cool. So I graduate. And Pepperdine offered me. Mm. Um, Malibu. Yep. I knew nothing about Malibu at the time, unfortunately. You, looking back, you were like, I, I missed out. But it gave me an opportunity to continue with my legacy here. Mm-hmm. And so, um, Coach Cal ended up talking to the president about reinstating me. And she was like, well, you know, he did exactly what I told him to do, which was graduate. So, yeah. So, boom. Come back. Come back. And I just remember this, like, the whole year, my whole mindset was just like, chip on your shoulder, chip on your shoulder. Like, show these people who had all these negative thoughts about you, didn't know who you was. Only thing you was was a, was a young kid doing what young kids do, which is stupid stuff Right. from time to time. Doesn't define you, doesn't make you a bad person. It's just like you make mistakes. And so, I come back that year and my whole year was just like, you gotta show the city who you really is off the court, but more so who you is on the court as well. And that was my best year. I didn't get hurt. I didn't get in no trouble. I was second leading scorer on the team off the bench, um, second leading scorer off the ten, on, on the team, off the bench, six man of the year in the nation, six man of the year in the conference, first team all conference, um, first team all tournament. You know, man, it was just like. So you, you feeling like all the stuff you went through for those first, what, three, three and a half, four years, it's starting to like, man, you starting to get your blessings. The best of all gods are starting to like, man, reward you for your hard work type stuff. Man, I think, cause I asked when I did it my second time. When I when I took my ACL the second time and I was just driving and I was just like, had tears going down my face. Just, why me? Why? And my one of my best friends, Greg Griffin, big time real estate um, 
real estate agent. He was like, why not you? He was like, man, God finna make you one of his toughest soldiers. He said, so why not you? And I was just like, hmm. And from that day forward, I just worked my butt off just to get back. And man, I look back on them years at Memphis and like I said, you know, I I did a lot of stuff in trouble. But it's like, you know, I, I don't I don't I never blame nobody. I never pointed fingers at anybody. You know, I took it on the chin. I never had parents that blame any other people, like whatever, they hold you accountable. They held me accountable. And it made me into the person that I am today, um, which allows me to be an example. Right. And tell, you know, kids, yeah, I know you hear the cliche stuff and listen to your parents, go to school, da 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 da. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But really listen to them. Right. Like, yeah, they hard on you and yeah, they they gonna say some stuff. They're gonna make you mad. You know, you're gonna be ready to leave the house. But these folks is doing this because they really love you. They know the world more than you know it yourself. Facts. Um, and that's why I, I love coming to the gym hunt and seeing the kids work. Cause like, I when I when I when I while I was here, I just wanted to know like, do y'all know who y'all working with, bro? Like, <laughs> Like we didn't have this opportunity to have like yeah. guys that were real skilled that did this. You'll get somebody daddy, you know, somebody yeah. drunk uncle who, who Yeah, you know, they they Yeah. I don't really, you know, at that point I I don't really let them know certain things at that point because it's not about me. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's right. about it's about them. Facts. You good. Why? Oh, I'm finna say. Oh yeah, great. I ain't caught him yet. Yeah. Yeah. But like I was I was saying, like the kids, I'm asking the kids, man, not I don't do that not know who you are though, but it's just like they think that it, man, you just coach hunt. To them <laughs> you just coach hunt to like People my age are like, man, it's dream hunt. And it's so crazy, bro. I promise, bro, it's so surreal. I, it's like, you know, go places and people take. I, I was just at East End Grill the other day grabbing some food. And dude behind the bar was like, he kept looking at me. He was like, you hunting, bro. And then he said, the one dude beside me was like, man, you must play ball or something, bro. And I was looking like, nah, I used to. He was like, from Memphis? I'm like, yeah. And then the dude was like, Jeremy Hunt. You know, of course, everybody think because of my hair and everything, right. it's different. And I was like, yeah. He was like, man, I kept looking at you. And it's so surreal to me, bro. It's just like, it's crazy that who would have thought when I first started playing basketball in the fourth grade that it would get to the point where that would happen. Yeah. Off of just me walking in a building and a person looking at me and constantly looking at me and constantly looking at me, not in a rude way, but in a way to where like, that you is familiar. Not, uh, I can't, I, and you know, one guy is like, let me, can I take a picture? I'm like, yeah, it's no problem. Like, and it's always, they get always nervous. And like, should I ask them for a picture? I'm like, it's all good. Like, it ain't no, you know. Right. I ain't Hollywood about Not it. Not at all, bro. It's like, and it's it's still, like I said, it's surreal, bro. It's like people looking at me like, um, and people be trying to tell me all the time, like, bro. You just think you know him without it, huh? I ain't gonna lie to I'm telling you, bro, and, and that's that's the same way Dolph was. Bro, that, that's how I feel about, like, I was telling somebody, bro, who would have told me when I was watching Hunt on the University of Memphis hooping? That man, I get a chance. One of my favorite times, I get a chance to do a podcast mm -hmm. with them, or even just chop it up with them via social media, bro. Because before before we uh 
got cool via social media. I was just at Dave's. I just inboxed you saying, bro, I'm still doing drills, or I just <laughs> happened to see you at Dave's one time, and we locked in, though. Yeah. But, you know, it's just like you're not thinking. I'm not thinking, like, bro, I'm going to get my one of my favorite Tigers yeah. on the podcast, yeah. bro. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, I appreciate you, you know, coming on, bro, and, and working with us, bro, and coming on to the Who Chronicles podcast, bro. And Man. then you easy to work with. That's the, that's the yeah. thing, bro. People know yeah. you passed I-240, bro. Yeah. You passed I-240. You passed the, the, the tri- Yeah, passed the tri-state area, bro. Yeah. And you easy person to work with, bro. So, I mean. Man, it's, 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 it's just more about, man, it's just really like, you know, being a people's person. Like, I get that from my mom a lot. Um, being able to have a conversation with anybody at any time is important these days because you never know who you run into. You never know who you're going to meet. You never know who you're going to, you know, talk to. Right. Always be generous and nice to people. Always kind, genuine. You know, and I'm always trying to pride myself on trying to be a people's person, but also yet still trying to be a better person just for myself in general to be a better person towards other people. So, I mean, that that type of stuff comes with maturity, growing, you know, over the years, me getting older, and me seeing a lot, you know, and knowing that life is short too as well. So, man, I, I you know, even beyond basketball, it's just like, bro, I had a, I had a hell of a career overseas. Like, you know, Man, I had a lot of fun, met a lot of great people. Um, what, what league did you play in overseas? I played in top league Germany, top league Greece, top league Portugal, top league Poland, um, top league Argentina, um, top league Romania. Mm. You know, like I said, my best places was I love Greece, I love Germany. Um, Poland was cool. Cold. It was cold, yeah, it was cold. But, you know, it was it was straight, you know. But you know, like I said, my two favorite was Germany and um and um Greece. I was super locked in, in in Portugal. Like super locked in. Bro, I was so locked in at one point. Man, one one game, uh and this will probably be the last story. One game we was playing for the League Cup. And we was at Cobb Madeira. That's actually where um, Cristiano Ronaldo from. Cobb Madeira. And I'm playing defense on this guy. Just regular defense. By our bench. Right in front of our bench. And I don't know if it was intentional. It may have been. It may not. Blow. Come across my face with his elbow. Blue. I'm like, God. Lee, I fell to the ground instantly. Blood just gushing out of my face. Man. He didn't hit me so hard. Not only did he slip my eye right here, but he slid my eyelid and open. Mm. Like my eyelid was open. Man. So I'm like, you know, get to the back. You know, they, 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 you know, trying to stop the bleed and they stop the bleed and, you know, they wrap my whole face up, face up like with a gall around my whole eye though. I can't mm. even see out this eye. So I go on the bench. I'm thinking I'm just done. I'm done for the game. We losing. Like, um, like them cups and stuff is important overseas to these folks. Mm. They be trying to win them joints for like, you know, just like bragging rights and stuff like that. It's basically saying you the best. Right. So, my coach come up to me, and this is this is at the time Mancho was the um assistant coach of the Spanish Spanish national team. Okay. So he's coaching like Pau Gasol and all them. He walk up to me, hunt. Can you play? And I'm looking at him like, with this one eye, like. And of course, I didn't want to be like, nah. Right. So I get up. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, bro, you crazy for this? And man, I get up and I run back and forth from behind the bench, and I, all right, I'm ready, I'm ready. We was down twelve. Come okay. here. I get in the game. Come off the screen, first jump. As soon as I pulled that joint, blood dropping my eye. So I'm like, dang. So I missed that joint. I'm like, dang, this is going to be tough. It was the third quarter. We was down 12. 
my next six shots, baskets. Mm. Four trays, layup, layup. We win the game. And all I can remember was my teammate, Carlos Andrade. He, he was like, nigga, nigga, you want tough nigga? <laughs> like, <laughs> and I was just like, I'm just like, man, get me to the crib, bro. Wow. Like, I'm, I'm not, my, my eyelashes was like in the inside of my eyelid. Mm. And it was scratching my eyeball. So at the middle of the night when I got home, I had to call the trainer to tell them folks to like take me to an eye specialist. And they had to flip my eyelid up and mm. pick them joints. Like, it was crazy, but that year was still like a great year. We went, we went to the playoffs, went to the championship and lost to the other good team, Benfica. And um, that was a really, really good year um, on the court and financially too. Um, and- Hey, not because y'all hunt. And I know you said that was your last story, but I just want you, I just want you to tell <laughs> one more story, bro. And everybody want to know- UAB? No. Nah. Okay. Everybody want to know, how you meet dog, bro? Cause air, you said you from Smoky <laughs> City, cause everybody, how you from Smoky yeah. City, dog from South Memphis? Well, you know, like I, you know, um, I used to go over there to Hamilton uh, a lot. You know, Billy Richmond, mm -hmm. Dustin Richmond, them all, we all was close. And Dolph was going to Hamilton at the time when I was going to Craigmont. And we used to play them all the time. And I used to go over there um, and, and just, you know, he would be over there around the, you know what I'm right. saying, school area and Bunker Hill and um, Castalia area, uh, like, yeah. you know, um, and, and that's, that's, that's how we met. And when I seen him, when I seen him like actually get on, get on, not even get on at the point, I seen him at census. And I was like, what up, bro? Man, up here, man, just trying to get my music going. And, <laughs> and it was when he had flavors, right. you know, and it was him and daddy, oh, passing CDs out. Make a long story short, years go by, and one of my other homeboys, who end up becoming like super, super close friends with my other homeboy, Greg, the one that do real estate, he was telling me like, yeah, man, my, my partner gonna blow, my partner gonna blow, and I'm saying like, what you talking about? Like, man, dog, bro. I'm like, dog from uh, Hamilton? <laughs> he was like, yeah, man, and he ended up becoming his manager at the time. Oh, okay. He would always talk about it, it's like, and at the time, I kept saying, my dog got to change the flow. He got to change. He, he sound like he talking too much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And from then, man, from that day, like, I don't, bro, just got better, better, and better. And it's always, like, it's a true story about the real recognized real because that's true. Like, bro was, like, one of the realest that I have ever graced the earth with, encountered with, been around like one of the realest dudes you were, I'm talking about genuine giver, man, just unbelievably, oh, he was an unbelievable person, bro. And it's like, I'm a huge Nipsey Hussle fan as well. Nipsey is the West Coast Dolph. Dolph is the Southern Nipsey. Right. Both of those guys was the exact person, the same person when it come to characteristics. And it's like, I never got a chance to meet Nipsey, but I want to meet Black, Black Sam. But I met one of the guys that was um, um, one of Nipsey's guys that was, I forget what, I think his name, Dave Gross or something like that. And we had lunch, you know what I'm saying? And, and I, was, I was just asked him about Nipsey all the time. Like, he would just be telling me different stuff. And I'd be like, I sound like dog. Man. Yeah. You know, and it's crazy. It's just like, it, it's just, man, it's crazy, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm talking about bro pull up, used to pull up to the crib, just. Random as hell. Just random. See, drive by, stop, pull up. We'll be out there just talking about life, just talking about different stuff. Just and people don't even know it. Before he died, he was sober. Man, 
He stopped smoking, stopped drinking, drank. Mm. So it's like, that's why when, when when it happened, I was just like, they could have at least gave him a chance, bro. Thanks. A chance. King of Memphis, man, for man, sure. Man, thanks. King of Memphis. Man, you heard it first here on Who Chronicles podcast. I had my guy, Jay Hunt. We got a chance to dig into his story. We got a chance to talk about the King of Memphis, Dolph. And uh, man, we appreciate my guy, Jay Hunt, coming on our podcast, chopping up with us, giving us some game today.